Hey crafty family, it's me! And today we are going to make a screw it and do it little journal that you can make in case you don't have a Rolodex or anything that you are, you know, maybe you don't, you want something, you know, like to keep your screw it and do it stuff in or something you're not sure what to do. Well, I got some large, um, index cards. I got some watercolor paper. Now, if you don't have watercolor paper, you can use large index cards. If you don't have index cards, you can use watercolor paper. I'm going to use a little bit of both. These are large index cards. So they are six by four postcard size. And I think cutting them in half or, or, uh, because half of it would be, let's see, what's half of one of these suckers? I think half is about the same size as my cards that I well, probably a little bigger even. These are four by, yeah, four by three. So my other cards are only four by like two something. So these are actually a little bit bigger, which is nice. So yeah, let's get to cutting and make this journal. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take this handful of uh, papers and they're six inches so I'm gonna cut them at the three inch mark and I think my blade is really dull so it's not cutting very well I may have to change it real quick you guys don't mind watching me change it do you nah yeah, because it's not cutting very well. It's cutting really sloppy because it needs to be changed. And I think you do you do it that way. There's like a little thing. It's really easy to change, actually. Get in here. Nope. Let's see. I know I've got it. I should have thought of this prior to starting the video, but you know, here it is. Is this a new one or is this a yeah that's a new one I believe why would I keep the old ones I don't know why I would keep it I don't remember how to get that out now I thought it just oh there it does slide out okay throw that in the garbage Okay, so those are already cut. So now these are, so I know what to cut the uh, watercolor paper at. These are four by, four by three. So we are going to cut this at, what are we cutting this? We're cutting this at three inches. Nice and Nice. And by four inches. Oh yeah, that's much better. Much better. So you got those. And then this we could probably get, let's see. You know I'm bad at measuring. I can get two, I can get four out of this if I do it this way. Cut it three inches this way. Three inches by four inches. Four inches. And that's the start. Maybe I'll get another piece of paper and just use half of it. Or I can use the whole thing. And we can do, let's see, get rid of the piece of hair up here. Oh, he's got hair. Yeah, because this way we can fit two. So we want to cut... What was it? What was the way of doing it? 
four inches. Okay, yeah, so four inches. Do you know what's a pet peeve that I've noticed lately? Well, not lately. I've been noticing this. On YouTube, like, channels, I, you know, it'll say, like, something is a DIY or a tutorial. Or not a DIY, a how-to or a tutorial where it's, you know, like, based on the title, you're going to learn something, right? Wrong. You know, and I'm saving this because I'll make little inchies out of it. Little watercolored in inchies or something. Um, yeah, that's not the case, I find. People will put how-to or tutorial on something that's, like, sped through. They're not really teaching you anything. They're doing something, but they're expecting you to learn it just by watching without them talking. And to me, that's not right. Like, if you're going to call something a tutorial or a how-to, then they should be teaching you how to do it with verbal, you know, spoken word. <laughs> teaching you, okay, you're going to do this, and this is why we do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I never put tutorial on my videos unless it's, I know I'm teaching you something. Now, DIY is like a do-it-yourself, and people will put DIY on a tutorial. Well, d DIY means do-it-yourself. So, in other words, it means like, you know, do-it-yourself seashell turtle, and it shows you how to make the seashell, seashell turtle yourself that you could have bought in the store. So, or do-it-yourself paint, or do-it-yourself this. It's teach A DIY teaches you how to do something that you could otherwise buy. That's what a DIY is. Or do it yourself, you know, like do it yourself, you know, hardwood floors because it teaches you something that otherwise you would normally purchase a service for or a, you know, item in a store. So I don't understand like people labeling their videos the wrong things and it kind of gets on my nerves. Because I'll like, like today I was watching, you know, because I'm, I'm always interested on if I could find a how-to video on how to draw like certain things. Like today I saw a video. I don't really seek them out because I'm not really good at drawing, so whatever. But, you know, I saw a video in my recommended or recommended things that said, you know, how to draw a whimsical face. And when I clicked on it, it was just some lady speeding through... A, journal page that she did that happened to have a whimsical face but she doesn't actually teach you anything so that drives me nuts pet peeve you know anyway once you got your stack of paper you're going to put it now see I've got two different types of paper in here so you know you can like stagger them if you are going to do it you know and do every other page to be um It looks like I have more watercolor than I do. Well, maybe not. You can stagger the pages so that you get like every other page is a index card. That's the word I was trying to think of. And every other card is a piece of watercolor paper. Something like that. Or you can just put it in there all willy-nilly. It doesn't matter really. Now... Watercolor paper obviously is great for any kind of media. You can use mixed media, you could do paint, you could do watercolor paint, you can do gluing, you can do anything on watercolor paper, in my opinion. I've never had anything I couldn't do. Um, however, the index card is a little flimsier, so you might want to save your, like, if you plan on doing a collage product, yep, a collage page you know doing collaging or acrylic paint save that for these and use the watercolor for anything that's really going to warp the page or have a lot of water you know a lot of media if there's going to be a lot of media on it then i would use the watercolor page if you're planning on doing collage or drawing or you know doodling or you know inking and stuff like that then you can use the index card so that's how i will do it because i'm going to do you know some screw it and do it in this thing and some on my and what's cool is if you do it where you have like oh that worked out perfect i didn't know i had the same amount of paper weird didn't even practice, didn't even shoot for that. And this one I need to cut the edge because it's driving me nuts because that's before I change the blade. 
I'll use a blade like I probably should change it a long time ago and I'll keep using it until it's literally ruining the, the paper I'm cutting. Okay, so since I want the front and back cover to be hard pieces, I'm going to put two of these next to each other. Okay, what I'm going to do now, and I've got one piece of paper that is just making me angry because it is sticking out and I'm just going to cut a sliver off of it. Not a big deal. Just driving. There we go. It's better. It's not as sticking out as much. So now we're going to punch holes. Now you could do this, you know, one of two ways. You can punch a couple holes and put ribbon in it or just tie a bow and be done with it. You know, you can also do it where you have 30 cards and do one card a day. Um, or you could just do them willy nilly as you want to. I'm going to use binder rings and the reason I'm going to do that is because this way I could pull the sheet out, work on it, and then put it back in. So, you know, but you could do it however you want. So I'm going to just eyeball um, my holes and I'm just going to put them, you know, a little bit in from the edge. That'll be fine. And I just messed it up. Okay. And like I said, I'm just eyeballing it. And then all you got to do is take your last sheet and grab a couple more. And then all you got to do is line up those holes. And you could just punch all the way down all your pages. And put them down like that. Grab another little stack. And you can go through several pages with a crocodile. If you don't have a crocodile, just use a regular, regular office hand punch. Will work just fine. That one got a little close to the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's your, you know, screw it and do it. It's not meant to be like this perfect thing. It's just meant for basically your practice art. It's not meant for like perfect beauty and precision and perfection. It doesn't take long to punch through. couple of rings which I'm not good at opening these for some stinking reason I just suck I suck at it but they loosen up as you use them so they won't be so bad now I've got these big rings but I've also got these little ones and let's see which ones will fit these might work out just fine for now and if I need to switch them out later I will yeah, I'll use the little ones for now. If I need to switch to bigger ones, that's what I'll do. But for now, and you can even just do one ring and just one hole. You don't have to do, you can just leave them kind of like on one ring. You don't have to do two rings. So if you only have one ring or just a piece of ribbon or a piece of string, you could just do one. You don't have to do two. It's completely optional. Okay. 
and my fingers don't work. And there you go, you've got your little booklet and now you can just decorate it or just do your first screw it and do it. Um, you can do it like this. If you, you could take it completely off the ring or you could just do it like this and do your art. And then when you're done, you know, flip it back around and that could be your first page. You could tie a little bow on here, you know, but how cute is that little book? And it was very easy to make. What did it take us? You know, 12 minutes. And you've got your screw it and do it book, no excuse. You can also, what's great about this is it is small enough to throw it in your purse with your, with a small pan of watercolors and a water brush and wham. There you go, do your screw it and do it while you're waiting at the doctor's office, while you're waiting on your kid at school, you know, if they're doing a sports thing and you're sitting outside, you could throw some watercolor down, you know, or take with you some colored pencils or whatever. It can be a cute little travel book. You could throw it in a little Ziploc plastic bag with a couple of colored pencils or something. And there you go, you could do your screw it and do it while you're waiting and you, you know, just have nothing to do. So it's a great little travel book to work in and I love it. I think it's really cute. You can do like, you can even do this as like a journal. You could do your screw it and do it. And then you can use this to write your, um, do journaling on because it's lined. You know what I mean? So how cute would that be to do, you know, some journaling? So you could do it that way too. So these are just ideas. I will post a link to where you can get these cute little pans of watercolors for really cheap on Amazon, really cheap. So I think they're like 12 bucks and they're really nice watercolors. They're not like crappy and they have like their own little where you can mix colors and whatnot. So totally, this would be so easy to take with you. This, this, and I mean, that's all you need. And if you want to, if you need to finish anything up, you know, like stickers or you could throw some washi tape in or whatever. And you've got a little travel set that you can take with you to do your screw it and do it. So how cool is that? So I hope this was helpful in learning how to, I'll also put links where you can get a crop -a dial and these little binder rings. I'll put links to where you can get that stuff easily in the description below. So I hope this was helpful to you and that you will make this and play along with me in the screw it and do it because it is a lot of fun and it is a great way to keep yourself doing some sort of creating every day even if you only have five or ten minutes. You know, that's what it's for. Just screw it and do it. Just sit down and get something done. Uh, I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you give this a thumbs up and also subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check the links in the description. There's always some cool links. Also, there's a link to my Patreon um, where you can go there and become one of my poodle patrons and have access to a secret uh, Facebook group where we do swapping and all kinds of fun things where also I will be doing live classes that are just for my patrons to thank them for being patrons. So if you want to be a part of that, check the link in the description and I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people and I'll talk to you later. Bye.